Hey guys, and welcome back. In September of 1996, the Nintendo 64 launched in the United States with only two games, Pilot Wings 64 and Super Mario 64. Between September launch date and Christmas of 1996, only six additional games were launched. I was one of the lucky kids who managed to get an N64 come Christmas in 1996, along with my own copy of Super Mario 64. At the time, I didn't even realize that there was a lack of games on the N64. I had my copy of Super Mario 64, and I became consumed with getting 120 stars. So today, with the help of my buddy Pucho Magic, we're going to commemorate Super Mario 64 with a custom modded N64 controller that is themed after the game that started it all for me, Super Mario 64. Welcome back everybody. If you're new here and you enjoy the content, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel where you'll find all kinds of projects and mods. Well, this controller began life as a simple blue controller. It's not in the greatest condition, but I have a feeling we're going to make it look pretty awesome when we're all said and finished. But for now, let's go ahead and rip this controller open and start disassembling. With the controller completely ripped apart, I've gained access to all the different contact pads and I'm going to take some time to clean those up. I'm using some 99% IPA to do this and toothbrush. With those pads all nice and clean, I'm going to set them off to dry and I'm going to go ahead and send the shells to my buddy Pucho Magic. Pucho does some absolutely amazing custom artwork on consoles and controllers. You guys should check him out on Instagram. He's totally worth a follow. With those shells on their way to Pucho, I'm going to spend some time to actually refurbish this existing joystick properly. So to do that, I'm going to disassemble the entire joystick, and you can kind of see all the nastiness that's on here. You have like ground up plastic on here, various kinds of lint and debris. So we're going to clean all that up with some Q-tips and some IPA, and I'm going to get every single surface and just give it a nice wipe down and make sure it's perfectly clean. Once that's done. I'm going to use some joystick butter to go ahead and lube everything up correctly and make sure that I don't get any plastic on plastic wear between all the parts. The key when using joystick butter is to just use a tiny, tiny bit. I'm using less than probably a quarter of a grain of rice in each of these applications and I'm just making sure that I cover most of the surfaces where plastic will touch other plastic. The best way to get an N64 control stick feeling really good is to refurbish it in this fashion. And if you're interested in joystick butter, I've got a link in the description where you guys can go ahead and get $1 off your purchase. I'm not affiliated with them, but I just wanted to pass it along.
with that joystick feeling really good, I want to make my way over to the cable. The first thing I'm going to do is remove the cable from the PCB, and to do that, I'm just going to use some desolder braid. While I do have other methods that are probably more efficient to do this, I figure if other people are watching this, this is probably the method that they're going to use. The key here is just to use some flux while you're doing it, and not push too hard with your solder, soldering iron. You just want to lay your soldering iron on top of the solder wick and let it soak up everything that's sitting on the pad and onto the actual pin. To remove the pins from the plastic housing, I'm simply going to use my dental pick in a similar fashion to the way I do it for GameCube controllers to pop those out. Next it's time to remove the plug end of the cable and this is much easier said than done and I want to say thank you to my buddy Lovebot for showing me how to do this. He is an awesome modder out of Europe and if you're in that area Check him out, he does all kinds of N64 and GameCube controller mods, I'll leave a link in the description to his Twitter. But anyway, thanks to him for showing me how to disassemble that. In the interest of time and scope of this video, I've already sleeved the cable and now it's time to reassemble this bad boy. So with all that, let's montage through the reassembly process. With the cable all done, next we gotta figure out the buttons and realistically I wanted to go and make something a little bit crazy here. And to do that, what I've done is I've mixed up two different kinds of pigment. The first one is a glitter red and the second one is a color shift blue. And what I'm gonna attempt to do is try to make some two-tone buttons. So I'll be mixing both of these at the same time and pouring them both at the same time. The goal is something really unique. Hopefully it turns out the way I intend. We'll have to just wait and see. If you're interested in trying to cast your own buttons, I've left a card in the upper right hand corner which takes you through the tutorial I made on how to do it not too long ago. Definitely worth checking out. Well, overall this controller turned out absolutely amazing. I love the gloss red and blue that Pucho did on here. It's incredible. It's like glass. It looks absolutely awesome. And not only that, but I really appreciate him painting the R, L, and Z buttons in the matching Mario yellow. Looks really, really nice with that paracord controller sleeve. I was also extremely satisfied with the way those two-tone buttons ended up turning out. I think they're really cool. But you guys will have to let me know what you think. Did you like the way the controller turned out? And did you like the two-tone buttons? With all that being said, guys, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a comment, a like, and a subscribe. And I'll catch you guys for the next one here soon.